Yo, what's up? What's up? It's your girl Nina here. <laughs> um, I'm just making a video for my sister. Um, and for those of you who don't know, I always make videos for her. Um, well, not always. I just started this year. Um, because I live in Ontario, I moved here four years ago and she's in BC. I wanted a way to communicate with her so that we could kind of keep in touch and not lose the connection that we have because like I said we are very close and everybody knows this. They envy our relationship because we are just like two peas in a pod forever. I love you sister. Um, this video is going to be dedicated to happiness. Um, my sister is going through a very hard time right now and I just this and this video being for her I just wanted to share with her some of the ways that I stay happy um, and there's ten of them so I just want to start off by saying I love you sister and you can get through this and you can get through anything I know you're a strong woman and I love you so number one is uh, drugs and alcohol and sobriety um, my sister doesn't struggle with any of that except like there are some things but like um, I don't even know why I put it in here because really she doesn't really struggle with any of it but um, because like I struggle with sobriety <laughs> I struggle with sobriety a lot and one of my ways to stay motivated is just to I don't know keep sober because I find that when I'm when I was drinking like I here in Ontario I stayed sober for a year and then some and in that time I started like becoming stronger like I felt like my immune system was really good like my health was had really improved and then I relapsed in Jamaica because in Jamaica when you're on the beach and you have the sun shining and it's just you need a fucking margarita or a fucking Shirley Temple or like a pina colada like in your lap there because it's Jamaica like you're not gonna not have an alcoholic drink there you're there to have fun and let go but anyway so that's where I relapsed and I noticed that my grades were starting to slip I noticed that being my future husband had started to argue a lot and it just wasn't going very good so on my own I had decided to stop drinking and it's been going good like I feel really really healthy and that's like contributes to my happiness because I feel that if you are using any kind of drugs or alcohol to sedate yourself into a state where I don't know you think it's temporary happiness it's not good for you like and everybody already knows this and my sister knows this all too well She's the one that has to like carry me home after a night of drinking and no. Number two, waking up early and productivity. So me and my sister always stay up late. We always pull all nighters together when I was living there like we'd always do that and it was fun like we're both night owls. Um, but if you're trying to be happy like it's not good to like stay up late and uh, pull all nighters and all that other stuff because I mean what are you gonna get done if you stay up all night and then the next day you know like you've slept half of the day away because that's what I used to do I used to sleep until 3 p.m. and it's just not good because if you're trying to like crush goals and stuff like that you can't sleep all day and like if you um, like I don't know sink your sleep and wake cycles then I think that you have a better chance of like waking up when the sun does, going to bed when the moon comes up, that kind of thing. And I think it's very important to your happiness. Um, number three is my favorite because it has to do with looking fabulous all the time. For me, personally, I like looking fabulous all the time. I like because when you look good, you feel good. And I just think that um, if you wake up and you like don't do your hair or anything like that like you know some people don't like to dress up every day like I do but like for me I think that it's like a suit of armor like that you put on every day like Superwoman does and you can go out there and you have the confidence to just get what you need to do done and um, when you like I said when you look good you feel good and if you look like poo then you feel like poo you know what I mean and I think that it's a very 
good idea to have that confidence to go out there and you know hand out your resumes or whatever it is you know you need to do um number four is self-care this is really important too especially for sister Farah. she's always helping other people out and like i had to I was thinking about it and I was like, she always helps other people out. She has a heart of gold and I am so very blessed to have you as a sister because you always took care of me whenever I wasn't at my best and I don't know, like sometimes there's just like, she, my sister doesn't know like boundaries and stuff and she just like takes care of everybody else before herself. Right Farah? And I love you. I love you for that. But you have to have time for yourself. So, some of the things that you could do, which I do all the time, is shopping. It's my retail therapy, and I love it so much, and my sister, you're going to love it too. Um, you know how it feels when you go and buy a new shirt, or not, new pants, or whatever. You feel like, really good. Um, also, like, get your hair done, manicure, whatever. Um... Writing in a journal. I don't think that you like to write, sister, but um, I know that it's very therapeutic for lots of people. So if you want to like start a a journal, like and do your or daily affirmations, like writing down little things that you're good at or things that you want to achieve, and putting and putting them on your mirror somewhere where you can see every day. Wake up and just you'll see that message like. I am beautiful or I can do this or you can do anything and I don't know you see it enough when you hear it enough that you're gonna believe it and you're gonna go out there and you're gonna kill it trust me sister it's gonna work um what else um yeah the whole self-care thing like I was gonna talk about the medicine wheel because elders around here in Ontario take the medicine wheel very seriously and it's about balancing out your physical, your spiritual, your mental, and your emotional state at all times. Um, making sure that you're taking care of your mind, like thinking positive. And my sister is very good at this because she used to tell me to think positive all the time. Um, physical, going for walks every day with baby. Like baby will love the sunshine and you guys are about to get hit with like a bunch of sun this week, I think. I'm not sure when, but it's coming. Um, emotional, just making sure that you aren't so hard on yourself because you're a single mom now and you're gonna rock at it. It's gonna be hard, it's gonna be tough, but I'm here for you, Isaac's here for you. If you ever need help financially or anything, we're here for you and I know you can do this. Um, number five is hobbies. So when I quit everything I took up beading I I was beating a lot of like earrings and stuff like that I have a set here somewhere so when I stopped drinking and stuff like that I started beading earrings and these are some earrings that I beaded um, and it just kept my mind off like the cravings and stuff like that. It gave me something to do. It kept me happy. I also got a guitar. It's in my closet right now. Um, I never learned to play it, but like I had it in me that I was going to learn. Just never did. Um, busy life. Um, for Farah, she loves to sing. So like going to a karaoke bar, not to drink, but just like with some girlfriends and going to like you know, sing your heart out, join a choir. I know there's choirs in Prince George because Prince George is very big and it's like a city almost and there you could do anything there. Um, boxing, oh my God, they have a boxing cl class there that you can go to all the time. Um, and that's a good way to release like anger and stuff like that. Um, just little things like that. Um, number six is environment and this one is one of my favorites because um, like Beyonce, you know Beyonce, <gasps> Beyonce, she said something one time in like one of her biographies, she said, who you choose to surround yourself with has a lot to do with your destiny and those are words that I live by all the time like and whenever I'm thinking about like, I'll use an example, like, before I came to Ontario, I used to hang out with my cousins, and I used to hang out with badass friends, 
I used to hang out with people who woke up and the first thing that's on their mind is alcohol. They just want to go to the beer store at 9 a.m. They just want to uh, scrounge up change just to find their next bottle of wine or whatever or, you know, like their toke or whatever. And they just think that, like, education is not that important. Um, but it is. Um, those are the kinds of people that I used to surround myself with and I don't think that if you're trying to better yourself, it's good to surround yourself with people who have goals, people who are in school, you know, people who have drive and passion to succeed in life and go somewhere else other than to the beer store, you know what I mean? Like because those are the people that you should become friends with because like it's very important. Um, because it does, they do control your destiny. Like, if you're gonna go hang out with the people that are fucking into drugs and alcohol, then that's gonna be your destiny. You're gonna go, you're gonna end up on PG streets, and you're just gonna, you know, get real fucked up. And it's hard to reverse that. So, instead of going that direction, you concentrate on school or like a career or something that you're really genuinely good at. Something that you can, you know, wake up every day and be like, okay, this is what I'm gonna work towards. Um, if you surround yourself with positive people and people who, um, you know, have dreams and ideas, then you're going to start to have that too. And you're going to notice a change in your life because, I mean, that's what happened to me. I came here to Ontario and now I just, I, I cannot, you know, think of not, I couldn't imagine myself not being in school. I couldn't imagine, you know, like my goal being to go to the air store. You know what I mean? Let's stop that native stereotype and just, you know, show people that we are smart and that we are, we can do other things other than drink. Um, also included in environments is your home. If your home is like your sanctuary, your humble abode where you come to relax and you feel really good in your home. Like, I love my home. It took me a long time to make it the way it is now. Um, it took us three years. We started from nothing. Um, but now we have like, you know, the things that we want and the things that we make us feel comfortable in our home. I, I like Isaac always has plants. Plants, I think, are really, really good for, like, your, you know, to be in your home. They contribute to fresh air. They, I don't know, like, I just think that the, um, it's organic and they just make you feel good. Like, I always make sure I have a, a vase of flowers on my, well, I look always make sure I have a lot of flowers on my table in the kitchen. Um, I have, like, a salt lamp. Um, I have, I always like candles. I always just make sure that when... If I have an unexpected visitor, that visitor, when they come to my house, they're going to be like, hmm, she has a nice house. And I don't know, it's just somewhere where you are all the time. And like, if you look around and you're inspired to do something, then it's very important. Like, I think it contributes to your happiness. What else? Job. This is very important because when I was in school, um, I was like learning all the different things that, uh, oh, I'm in school for a Bachelor of Social Work, by the way, and when I was in school, I was learning of all the different um, types of stress that people have. Um, one of the biggest contributors to stress is financial stability. So if you are not financially stable, I mean, that causes you a lot of stress. You have bills to pay, you have children to look after, uh, you want to be independent but you can't because you don't have a job. Um, all it takes is to make a resume, uh, go out there, talk to the managers, uh, you know like even if it's just fucking KFC or McDonald's or anything, like there is no job that is, you know, too shitty. Like you, you're not better than any other job out there, you know what I mean? Like I'm a barista right now at Twigs. And I love my job. I make sure I go every day now and I don't miss a day. Um, I never, I try my best not to call in. I try to be very reliable and punctual. Um, I just think that uh, if you do have a job and you do do these things, then it takes off like so much stress from your life. And you can be independent. And who knows, like maybe in those jobs, the job that you pick, there there are ways that you can excel in that job. Like you could be promoted. And 
I think it's just very, you know, like lots of natives choose not to have jobs because they have that mentality that they, I don't know, they're just drunken Indians, you know, like on the reserve and like they can't be any better than that, but they can. My sister is very smart and she can do this, I believe she can. Um, what else? My sister is very great at doing this. She's always very grateful and thankful. Um, I think that it's important to like look around at what you have right here in this moment. Um, for my sister, she has the cutest little baby. He is gonna be, he just turned three. Oh my God. Yes, he just turned three. And he is the cutest little baby ever. And she's so lucky because she has him to hug and hold and oh, he just knows when she's feeling sad. And whenever he she feels sad, he goes and he hugs her. And I think it's just the cutest. And she's so blessed for that. Um, one other thing that we are so blessed for is our father. Our father is a very strong, outspoken, stubborn, man and we're his daughters. Uh, I take after him a lot and like if you put two of us in a room we are both very alike. Sometimes I don't like it but sometimes I do. It comes in handy when you don't want to be walked over or stomped on. My dad is a very strong person and you know like after our, pa our mom passed away he tried his very best to the best of his ability like when you lose your wife obviously you're gonna do some things that you're not proud of but he did the best that he could in a shitty situation and i think he really did do a good job um i think if the roles were reversed and we lost our father instead of our mom things would be very different so um yeah just be grateful because like me and her my sister we weren't always that close and I think that when once our mom passed away we became like really tight because we were all each other had and um, we pretty much like just we persevered in a situation that you know a lot of young because I was 14 she was no I was 13 Sarah was 12 when mom passed away and we did the best that we could you know like um i think that uh a lot of people who are in that situation wouldn't have did as well um i'm not saying that we did like spectacular or anything like we still did a lot of bad stuff we were just entering into our teen stage so um i just imagine that amplified by like a hundred and that's me and my sister. We did like all the bad things, but now we're like, we are both parents. Me and my sister are mothers of boys, and we're gonna raise them to be very amazing young gentlemen. I think that it's great that we had boys because we have an opportunity to make them into strong indigenous men. Right, sister? Um, yeah, because I think that being thankful for whatever you have right now, even if you're sitting there in your room, just, you know, like, Things are so shitty, your man just left you, you're just, you know, like you're a single mom now and I just think that, you know, like it's time to find you after years of being in an unstable relationship, it's time to finally find time for yourself and um, I think that's important for happiness. Um, number nine is, and I skipped this in my last video, by the way, I'm remaking this video because my last video was like half an hour long because I was talking lots of nonsense like I am right now, so I'll just get right to it. Number nine is be social because I'm going to tell you a story about this. It's like something I watched on TV about this man who wanted to live up in the mountains, out in the wilderness by himself for a year. His goal was to live out in the wilderness by himself for a year. Um, so he went up to Alaska, I think it was, and he got somebody to fly him out into this secluded cabin or wherever. And when the plane, uh, when the pilot was leaving, he couldn't believe it. He was like, I can't believe you're actually doing this. Like the guy had a radio in case, like of emergencies or whatever, but like he went up there with nothing. Like, and he just was supposed to survive off the land and stuff like that. So he did really good. Like he did really well. Um, I don't know how he 
what he did in his time there, but he only lasted seven months or something like that. A little over six months because like when he came back, he just, he'd realized that people aren't supposed to be alone. So like we're meant to interact. Like that's how the creator made us. Like we're not supposed to be on our own by ourselves. If you think you can do something on your own, like yeah, you can, but like don't stay in your house and just be like depressed or sad or whatever. You need to get out there and you need to socialize. And my sister is the best at that. She's a social butterfly. She's the best at small talk. She can make anything. You pick a fucking topic and she'll make a fucking storybook out of it. Like that's how great my sister is at socializing. So that's one of the keys to happiness, I think, is not being in your, stuck in your house. Because you're just going to get sad and depressed and that's not good. So, number 10, and I left this for number 10 because I think it is very, very important. It's something that I never used to have. I never, and it's goals. Um, goals are very important because lots of people, especially native people on the reserve, they don't really have any, like, what do you, like, purpose. Like, they don't have a purpose. And when you don't have a purpose, um, when you wake up in the morning, if you don't have anything to do, what are you going to do? You're just going to stay in bed. You're just going to roll back in the covers because it's too cozy and you're too sad and depressed to leave the house. But if you have goals, and it could be anything, it could be landing the new job that you just applied for, going up there every day and applying for it, talking to the manager, um, or you know like you already have a job and you want to move up in the ladder like you're striving to you know be a good employee show up good uh early every day and you know just be very punctual that kind of thing um you know like or even going to school like before i moved here i didn't have an education well i did like i i never graduated from high school i went to the ceremony and everything but i never left with a diploma i left with a leaving certificate and I don't know, I, I was just part of Huckleberry Camp and I thought that, you know, that was going to be my life forever. I don't know what I was going to do after that. That place is closed now, by the way. I don't know what I would have did, you know, like, um, so luckily I had a really amazing guy um, come and save me from all that turmoil. Like, it was a piece of shit community that I came from. Um, not, like, I really like our community. Anyways, I'm going off topic, but if you have purpose to wake up every day and go to school or go to your job or excel in your career, then you're going to get up every day and you're going to get ready and you're going to be out of the house and you're going to work towards something every single day. And these aren't just, like, short-term goals. Like, these are long-term goals that you're going to work towards every day. Um, lots of Native people don't do that like they are not raised to think that school is important and education is important people will say to you like walking down the street like you should be in school but they're not going to help you you have to do it yourself you have to go and get the application to apply for school so that you could get the funding to do it because at the end of the day nobody else is going to do it for you it's just you you have yourself and that's what happened to me and now i'm working towards getting a degree in like social work and like after that who knows maybe my master's like is, the possibilities are endless and i think that's what people are scared of is like their fears they're they're afraid to be successful and you know and especially native people they're like just have that like mentality that they're just drunks and they're not and I think that's very important for um, for happiness is to have a purpose in life. Um, yeah, so those are my ten very important uh, ways that I try to keep happy. Because I don't know, like before, if you asked me three years ago how I how I try to be happy, it would be like drinking or smoking weed or taking Percocets or something stupid but those are temporary things that are just going to make you feel better for a little while if you work on things like this every day you're going to be successful you're going to have a house you're going to have a mortgage you're going to have a vehicle you know like 
little things like that and you also especially thinking about your children like don't you want to set up somewhere where your children have it easier than you did like when you were a kid or a young adult um, I know for me that my son is going to be 12 this year and I just want him to like I want to get a mortgage in a house and I want him to live in it after I pass away or whatever and then maybe he can sell it maybe he can you know pass it on to his kids whatever like those are the kinds of goals those are real and I think that um, it's very important for happiness especially for my sister because she's going through a really hard time right now and I just want to help her out in whatever she's going through right now because she's strong and I don't know how many times I said this but we come from a very long line of strong indigenous women my grandma Mary C lived until she was over a hundred she climbed like this mountain in a cabin to a cabin just to see it like because she'd been there like when she was little or whatever and she was like in her 90s or late 80s or something old people aren't supposed to do that but she did my grandma Rosso, I don't really remember much about her, but like, I'm pretty sure she was strong too. And me and my sister are just as strong as they were. So, Vera, this video is for you. I love you very much. And I just want you to know that me and Isaac, we're always here for you. And I know you're down and out right now, but... I know that you have it in you to be more than a stay-at-home mom. I know that I'm not being rude or anything either. She is a wonderful mom. My sister is super mom. She is the best. She helped me raise my son when I was having a hard time. But I know that she can be anything that she wants because she's stronger than I am. She's like, she doesn't take shit from anybody. And that's what I love about her. She, when I was supposed to be the big sister, she was my big sister. And we're a year apart, she's a, young, a year younger than me. So that must say something. Um, but I love you, sister. And like I said, you can do anything you want. And I'm right here beside you if you need any help. I love you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Mwah.